I welcome you for this NPTEL online course on earthquake geotechnical engineering. Today we are at lecture number 57 of this course which is on the ground improvement technique and we are going to talk about vertical rents. As you may be aware that we are discussing the last module of this course which is on ground improvement techniques. Already two chapters on this ground improvement techniques, one is types of ground improvement techniques, second ground improvements using geocentrics are over. Now, we are at the, today we are going to talk about the third chapter which is newly introduced that is ground improvement using vertical drains. So, in this uh, lecture 57 as well as lecture number 58 we will talk about vertical drains only. Uh, when we talk about vertical drains uh, like these are the, uh, uh, the drains which are used for the mitigation of the particularly for liquefaction. Here using those drains vertical drains you drained out the water out of the soil. And once you drain out the water it help in the ground improvement because many of the issues in the soil is due to the presence of the water. That is why drainage or uh, uh, dewatering is one of the ground improvement techniques. Here uh, vertical drains which are very popular to for particularly uh, for mitigation of liquefactions we are going to introduce them introduction of that those drains. Then two types of vertical drains that is uh, sand drains and another is called prefabricated vertical drains that is in a short called PVD we are going to discuss in detail. And then finally, we are going to talk the efficiency of the these vertical drains. So, let us start with the introduction with the vertical drains. Uh, large parts of the Indian coastline particularly are covered with very soft clay deposits and the shear strength of these deposits is very low and compressibility is very high. So, if you go along the coastline so, particularly these like uh, due to two reasons, one is that uh, because the presence of water and uh, the second is uh, like compressibility is very high. So, she as a result shear strength is low and they are mostly like uh, clay soil, marine clay uh, uh, near the coastlines. Hence, these soils exhibit very low bearing capacity and large settlements. So, even in the clay you may not have the issue of relative to liquefaction, but it is still during shaking these there is a what you call the softening effect these soils lose their uh, shear strength. So, the, these soils exhibit very low bearing capacity and large settlements and as a result ground improvement is necessary. Among various ground improvement options vertical drains is a common type of ground improvement technique which is up adopted on this type of soils particularly in the marine clay, uh, clay near the coastlines. Uh, now, what, what is vertical drains? They are continuous vertical columns of pervious sand or fibers. So, normally because uh, uh, if you made from the sand that means it is from the natural material or it could be fib fibrous which could be like uh, synthetic fiber or natural fiber. So, uh, about synthetic fiber geosynthetics we already discussed in detail and they can be used for uh, making drains. Uh, they, they these like uh, this previous material is installed inside clay or sandy soils mostly in clay. Those drains provide the pathway for the pore water pressure to escape from consolidating soil by traveling a shorter path that would be necessary without these. If like you know that uh, uh, when you have uh, provided vertical drains the effect of providing vertical drains that it uh, the water find a path to escape and that path is shorter if you do not provide the vertical drains then water need to travel a long distance before it get dissipated. So, the vertical drains will provide uh, the drainage path which is shorter in uh, compared to what was the path before when you did not provide the vertical drains. These drains allow the flow inside the soil to take place along the either horizontal direction which is in the least resistance or it serves the, uh, in that case it will serve the purpose of collecting and discharging the expelled water faster du during the process of consolidation. So, in fact, uh, in this vertical drains uh, using this vertical drains the water travel in the horizontally and then it may travel vertically also we will discuss in detail how the path goes. Com continue with this introduction uh, when we talk about installation part of the vertical drains uh, this is in conjunction with preloading uh, and, and this will bring a rapid dissipation of excess pore water pressure and thereby accelerating the primary consolidation. So, vertical drains will help first of all it will help you to dissipate excess pore water pressure which is generated maybe due to shaking or other reason. As a result it will also help 
to accelerate the rate of primary consolidation. So, it primary consolidation will be at the faster rate. However, vertical drains have no direct effect on the rate of secondary compression. So, here the vertical drain is helping you in one factor that is you know there are three types of settlement when we talk about uh, the settlements of the soils. First is called uh, immediate settlement which is for the basically for the for the sandy soils. But when we talk about clay or cohesive soils then two other primary consolidations and secondary compression which is mostly for basically organic soils are two more here. So, primary consolidation is one of the major factor for the clay or cohesive soils and these vertical drains help you to accelerate the rate of primary consolidation at the faster rate. So, though they, these drains may not help you in the secondary compression, however, the because the, your primary consolidation stays get over early, it will lead to early occurrence of secondary compression. As a result, it will uh, reduce the total reduction in the time for consolidation or settlement. So, when we start uh, time required for total settlement will also decrease because uh, the primary consolidation is faster and the uh, this, uh, onset of secondary compression is uh, early. Vertical drains help to improve the strength of soft cohesive soil by removing water voids and accelerating settlements. So, they are basically these vertical drains of course, are like uh, because they are mostly many times uh, particularly the sand made of the sand itself. So, their most purpose is in soft cohesive soil rather than in sandy soil. So, that is the application part. Bearing failures may occur without vertical drains and clay soils may develop settlements over many years. Why many years? Because consolidation tax may take longer time uh, compared to when we do not provide the vertical drains. And as a result there could be differential settlement also. So, preloading combined with vertical drains has become an easy and economical choice of ground improvement techniques. So, what is done preloading basically preloading where we say it is kind of a densification. So, you can compare preloading with the densification, densification of the soil and so then the densification along with vertical drains are mostly used. Depending upon the site condition vertical drains efficiency may uh, uh, maximum up to 80 percent, if it is not 100 percent uh, at least they may go up to 80 percent. However, it should be noted that the artificial sand drains are not suitable in expensive soils like uh, if your soil conditions are which is make like for example, black cotton soil which may expand uh, due to water like Montremelonite and organic soils because major part of settlement is secondary compression which is independent of pore pressure. So, in such kind of soils which is basically organic soils the most of the settlement comes from the third component that is secondary compression. The secondary compression cannot be controlled by vertical sand drains which we already dis discussed and the vertical sand drains are also dangerous in quick clays, quick clay conditions where the due to seepage uh, your uh, pore water pressure reaches to the point where you have this uh, pressure is equal to the effective stress and then net uh, is, uh, shear stress become 0, uh, net uh, so effective stress become 0 in that case. Uh, this is in quicksand condition clay due to sudden increase in settlement and there is a need to consider this in order to place sand drain in these before disturbance. So, this was about introduction of the vertical drains. Now, as we discussed there are two types of vertical drains are widely used for ground improvement techniques. One is called sand drains, another is prefabricated vertical drains, which we will call in the short PVD. Coming to this uh, sand drains first, which is uh, as the name suggests, they are will be made from the sand. Sand drain is best based on principle of rapidly and centrally dewatering system. Uh, so, sand drains will act like a pipe, is a sand drains is a process of radial consolidation which increases rate of drainage in the embankment by driving casing into the embankment and making vertical boreholes. And once vertical borehole is created, these holes are backfilled with suitable grade of sand. So, you create a borehole first and inside the borehole provide the suitable grade of sand, driven case is then withdrawn after sand has been filled. So, what is done? We create a hole, put a casing there and this casing is filled with the sand and then you take out that casing 
and the whatever thickness uh, the, the, uh, the you have uh, due to like you know casing whatever space is there that will be taken over by the sand will cave in. So, you now you have let us say clay two clay layers are there or I say in the vertical direction the clay uh, I have completely clay. So, the clay layer has been punctured with the sand drains. So, you have a uh, and then when the water comes water will find a path in this uh, sand drain. The sand must be capable of following the efficient flow of water. So, that means its permeability should be high, it should not be impermeable, which is the clay case, while preventing fine soil particles from being washed in. So, this is important. First of all, your sand grades should be such that it allows the flow of the water, number one, but it does not allow so much flow of water that uh, uh, with the water your the soil particles or clay is also being washed out. Otherwise, what will happen? Your this sand drain will choke out after some time. So, careful backfilling is also essential to avoid discontinuities which could give rise to necking and which can render a drain ineffective. So, that is also as I said. So, uh, 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 you, you do not allow like you know inside the drain that clay particles comes otherwise the drain will be choked out. A sand blanket is placed over the top of sand drains to con connect all sand drains. So, what is their, their connectivity? So, you see here. So, in this case you have a sand drains here. So, here uh, of course, this dimension little may vary, but let us say you have a, a thickness of the soil layer uh, is 3 meter to it could range very large 3 meter to 30 meter. So, it like you know it could be uh, quite much varying. Now, you have the clay layers and these are 1. So, I can put the numbers here this is 1, 2, 3 and 4 and the last one is 5. So, these are basically your sand drains and for example, between these two clay layers this th third number let us discuss third number sand drain. In the th third number sand drains like you have the, this is horizontally arrows are showing that water will try to come because the, this is the nearest path. The nearest path like water will try to find the wa water will always travel to the nearest path. So, the nearest path is this one for this one yeah, particularly if, we mid, if you are uh, away from the middle uh, towards this and if you have this side the nearest path will be here for this this is here. So, similarly in this case so, uh, you have vertical drains. So, what uh, horizontal radial drainage path will be like this. So, what will happen from the clay let us say I can say like you can say it uh, for understanding this is your clay this is also clay and this pipe is, is basically your sand drain. So, from the clay layers the water will come out and then it will go to the sand drains when this uh, like you know the, uh, the water comes on the top of it then a top horizontal drainage layer is, has been provided which connects your all the vertical sand drains and then ultimately water can dissipate this side or this side and it may go away. So, this is like typical uh, like how the sand drains are installed. The sand used for filling the holes should not contain fines. If your sand itself contain fines, then its permeability will decrease and it may not allow the uh, you know the flow of the waters. And then it should be the uniform be uniformly graded rather than poorly graded. The sand should not be coarse at the same time uh, this should not contain fines. Fines means the sand should not contain your the clay and the silt. But this at the same time you may not be using very coarse sand otherwise what will happen? So, much water is passing through this sand drains and that because flow is so flow need to be controlled in the sand drains basically. If your flow is very rare, very slow rate then also its effectiveness is not there. If flow flow inside the sand drain is at very large rate then it is possible that the, the water may take away with its the clay particles and your sand drains will be choked out. So, it should not be very coarse also to over facilitate the migration of the fine particles from the soil into the drain. So, if it is uh, coarse then it will facilitate the migration of the clay particles inside the drain and ultimately your drain will be choked out. For this reasons particles larger than 4 mm should not be used. So, this is the uh, suggested side that uh, the particles of the sand particles should be less than 
uh, like 4 mm and in fact you for fine grain soils you have up to 2 mm. So, however, before using it is necessary to test that the gravel sand mixture is compatible with the surrounding soil. Void in sand created by filling the hole should be sufficiently per pervious. Again, so another thing that it should be per permeability should not be very low, it should be per pervious to allow unobstructed flow of water from the soil into the drain and from lower part of the drain to the top. So, as we already see it, first it horizontally the water will flow in the sand drains and then when sand drains filled out then on from the it will pass from the top and it will go in the other like you no, know, uh, uh, it will uh, go away from the your uh, uh, area of interest. Now, what is the mechanism of consolidation for vertical sand drains? The excess pore pressure that is uh, we call in the short EPP is increased by all applied surcharge load in the embankment. Drainage occurs in vertical and horizontal direction which we already see. Horizontal direction occurs quickly due to sand drains, the drains accelerate the process of dissipation of excess pore pressure created by surcharge. So, what happens one thing one side you have the horizontal dissipation and then due to the surcharge uh, loading from the top then it could be vertical dissipation. What is the typical diameter of sand drains? Of course, it may vary, but typically it is said 180 to 450 mm that means, if I put it in the numbers it is 18 centimeter to to 45 centimeter. So, 18 centimeter is less than a fit 45 1.5. Too smaller diameter is not desirable because of difficulty in filling the steel pipe and danger of arching up of sand pipe. So, like it should not be very uh, like you know small uh, diameter of the sand uh, like if you have very narrow then what happens over the time that uh, like uh, it may filled out it may uh, the clay may cave in and then uh, because and it may not find much uh, path to, uh, of water to go on. Then sand pipe is driven to depth where penetration resistance is greater than 15. Then spacing of drains from one drain to another drain. Drains are laid either in square or triangular pattern. Spacing is kept smaller than the thickness of embankment in order to reduce the length of radial drainage path. So, like spacing is, is given in this case. So, you have in the two patterns for vertical sand drains, one is uh, square pattern, another is triangular pattern. So, you could see the spacing is the center to center spacing between two drains here and uh, so in, in triangular pattern is it is also shown. So, the, these two patterns that is uh, square pattern or triangular patterns, the, the, of course, this is in plan. So, this is in plan. So, this is the plan and these are most popular. So, this was about vertical sand drains. Now, the second part of the drains which is prefabricated vertical drains or in the short it is called PVT. They are also known as weak drains or weeks if the sand is packed in filter stroking they are called as sand weeks. These drains can also be flexible corrugated plastic pipe. So, it is basically when we talk about PVD mostly they these are the drains made of synthetic material which we are going to discuss or it could be including geosynthetics also. So, for example, Kesselman in 1940 was the first to suggest the use of driven cardboard drains to replace sand drains. So, you have the cardboard, cardboard you know that which is basically made of the papers and the hardboard. So, and then that, that cardboard uh, has been used uh, to replace the sand drains and cardboard drains are easy to install with less soil disturbance because uh, uh, it is not uh, heavy, it is not like metal or like this. <coughs> and especially processed cardboard has long life, but cannot sustain large deformations. Of course, their life is limited and because they, they may be you know that uh, de decomposed over the time. So, the, the uh, they have their limitations, but installations are easy. So, this was history where uh, in the early first was cardboard, it is started from cardboard and then it is replaced by the geosynthetics. Later on these cardboard drains have been replaced by plastic drains also known as plastic band shaped drain and has been manufactured in large scale. The well known brand for the plastic drain is geodrain which is like basically geodrain is you can say uh, one type of geosynthetics only 
because you have geotextile like a drain has been used here. So, this is geosynthetics which we have discussed which consists of a 100 mm white and 3 mm thick paper covered polythene strip which contains channels along both sides. The configuration is so fusion such that a drainage channel of more than 70 percent of the total drain area is available. Uh, so, when we have polymetric, polymetric materials such as polypropylene or high pressure polythene are normally used for manufacturing of PVD drains. The system comprises of two components, one is called core and another is called filter or sleeve. So, it is here what is core and filter. Uh, you have in the vertical drains, uh, these are the synthetic geosynthetic materials types of PVD, lay field drain and geo supply drain. So, in this case you could see this is corrugated material, this one corrugated and on the top of it you have the sheet which will prevent the water to come out. So, basically between this corrugation and the top part a piping is there, the space between that there that will act uh, that will provide a path to flow the water. Similarly, here these drains are used in our laboratory also, uh, this is corrugated and then you have the filter. So, between their filter and the corrugation you have a space and through between uh, like you have the let us say filter on the top of it you have corrugation the space uh, of course, it is not very thick space, uh, thin space the water will go from this. So, typically PVDs are classified based on material, core structure, durability and stiffness. The PVDs should be suffer uh, stiffer enough to withstand higher compression and bending. Materials which is used in the PVD and its associated property play a crucial role in quality management. So, what type of material you use depending on that your PVD will be uh, like uh, the performance will depends on its material property. Choosing of material should be done carefully for the PVD such that it minimizes soil disturbance and also protect the PVDs from cuts, tears and abrasions and can be successfully installed to the required depth. So, here there is a trade off one side if you uh, like select very stiff P PVD then it is okay. it may not get damaged with the cuts and tears and other things. But then if you use very stiff material then while installing it, it will be disturbing the soils. On another side if you have very soft PVDs then you can easily install, but then it may be uh, vulnerable to cuts and tears. So, uh, there will be trade off between these two. Usually anchor plate will be provided in the bottom to hold the PVD in place during withdrawal of mandrel. Mandrel is kind of a casing. So, like uh, when it is withdrawn, what will happen when you withdraw the mandrel? Then it may happen that with this withdrawal of mandrel, your PVD may also come out. So, to protect it, some kind of anchoring is done, the anchoring plate is used which hold the PVD in place. Installation of anchors also prevent the entry of surrounding soft soil into the, into the mandrel. So, the PVDs are anchored. Steel and flexible plate anchors are used for installation. Now, two types of anchors are there, one you have steel, another is flexible metal plate. The flexible metal plate introduces more disturbance, but used widely in larger size mandrel. So, if the size of the mandrel is larger, then it is recommended to use flexible metal plate anchor. And these they will provide, of course, when you use a flexible met metal plate anchors, because it is consists of metal, they produce some noise but that, that need to be used for the larger size mandrel. But when you have a small size mandrel, then steel anchors can be used which will create less disturbance compared to metal uh, because it will be the smooth surface. So, depending on your size of uh, like uh, mandrels, you can use either steel or flexible metal plate. When installing mandrel into the soil, tension will be created in the PVD. So, uh, there will be tension in the PVD. Then intensity of loading will depend on the unit weight, length and friction between the soil and mandrel. In adverse cases, the loading leads to the rupture. Uh, if uh, you have this uh, 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 the case uh, like you know that uh, uh, the case is such that where it is not effective, then it will may lead to the rupture of the PVD. Coming to continue with the geodrains. 
which is one of the types of uh, like uh, uh, like uh, drains have been claimed to have the following advantage. They are low cost like PVD is also ge geo drain, then fast installations ensure drain continuity, clean site, lightweight installation equipment, high permeability, negligible soil disturbance, positive drainage. So, these are all the advantages of the PVDs to use and because they are lightweight, they are economical, they, they have less disturbance and uh, fast installation is possible. Common types of PVDs are in dimensions they vary from 90 to 100 mm wide, wide that is 9 centimeter 10 centimeter and 3 mm to 5 mm thick. So, thickness is not very large it is very small 3 to 5 mm and usually installed by a lance which is lance is a kind of a you know that uh, equipment which is kind of like a kind of a gun uh, with a rate of about 140 mm in cross section. Installation speed of the order of 0.3 to 0.6 meter, meter per second and driving depth could be up to 45 meter. So, like it could be very PVDs are wound around reels, reels means you know kind of uh, like when you have this uh, uh, threads and uh, uh, like uh, uh, stitching threads and uh, uh, there is a reels. Similarly, PVDs are wounded and uh, as the mandrel is lowered like you have reels and uh, then PVD is connected and the, when the mandrel is lowered. So, PVD also will be uh, lowered with the with the mandrel. So, when the mandrel moves the PVD will, uh, uh, PVD from the top to bottom it will go. The bends are released by unwinding then once it is done then you do unwinding and then uh, the mandrel will be free with the PVD and the mandrel is taken out PVD remains in the place. Thickness of the PVD plays a crucial role in the selection process coarser filter fails to as the inclusion of clay particles whereas, finer filter may be subjected to tensile and puncture mode of failure during in, in, in its installation. So, it is important that what types of whether you use coarser filter or finer filter because they have different their characteristics. So, the, the, when we do this this result in subsequent reduction in the discharge due to the clogging effects. Hence, the apparent opening site of the filter should be selected carefully considering the site and permeability characteristics of ground to be treated in order to avoid clogging in drains. So, you create whether it is vertical sand drains or it is PVD, uh, we need to ensure that over the time this drain does not choke out and if the drain is choke out then it will be not effective. So, the, this is here that what type of opening should be there, uh, opening size of the filter basically it is also like a acting a filter where the like a, uh, through which water is coming out. So, the its size uh, the size of aperture size of opening need to be also appropriate. PVD should be selected according to the field conditions and adjoining soil properties and selection of good quality drains will be enhance the rate of consolidation and improve discharge capacity. So, one type of PVD will is not going to suitable for all the conditions depending on the site conditions depending on the soil characteristics the PVD required to be selected. The efficient discharge characteristics the permeability of drainage should be at least 200 times than the soil so as to achieve free drain conditions. So, this is this is important. So, how we select like the soil conditions are given you know the permeability of the clay which is permeability of clay is uh, very low while permeability of sand is comparatively high. So, at least the material which you are using for like you know that uh, uh, that should be 200 times more permeable compared to what is your the permeability of the soil for which you want to make a treatment. Then there is a one term which is given by what is called the efficiency. So, what uh, uh, for these vertical drains efficiency need to be checked and naturally everyone wa will like that they should be very efficient. So, the efficiency which is defined by a coefficient eta of the system of vertical drains is assessed with reference to the primary consolidation attained with and without installation. So, this is dealt with the primary consolidation as we already discussed the primary objective of these uh, like you know that uh, drains are to accelerate the primary consolidation. They do not help you in secondary compression 
but they help in a primary consolidation. So, you can say the, uh, the efficiency will be the ratio of primary consolidation a rate of primary consolidation with the PVD and then in the second case without P PVD. So, here this e efficiency eta is the ratio of PC and PSC where PSC and PSC are the primary consolidation and secondary compression respectively. However, the secondary compression uh, like you can say that uh, like secondary compression does not all uh, this vertical drains do not help there is no change there. So, this ratio when you calculate with this ratio that will be the efficiency of a drain and this efficiency of the drain could be in the range of 0.6 to 0.8 that means 60 to 80 percent effective. It is difficult to have a vertical drains which is uh, which effectiveness is more than 80 percent, but if it is 80 percent effective then it is ok. The efficiency of the drain system depends on the drain effects such as smear disturbance and drain resistance. Installation of sand drains in the soil is dis disturbed in two ways, first is being compressed and sheared and sec the second being smeared due to remolding. So, like if shearing is takes place compression takes place and then compression stress then you have the shearing and then the shear smearing it uh, tear apart. Both action reduces the soil permeability around the drains if the change in permeability and the thickness of the smear zone were known, smear could be accounted for. The, the drain should be capable to collect the water which is coming from the consolidation soil and also to uh, conduit in the surface. For water to flow upwards in the drain, there should be a head difference from bottom to the top with maximum head at the, head at the bottom. See the water will go in the upward direction only when the head, head is more at the bottom compared to at the top otherwise it cannot move the, like this. So, buckling or folding of sand drains or PVD does not generally affect the performance of the drain even for prolonged service period. So, this was about efficiency. Now, coming to the clay exhibiting horizontal stratification with some with seams of silt may affect in the following manner. First, Thin lent lenticular strata of high permeability greatly increase the efficiency of drains since they act as a horizontal drains attached to the main arteries. So, they will be acting like you have you have the linear material strata of high permeability going in the horizontal direction then the water will find a path in the horizontal direction and will drain out. Then continuous thick seams of high permeability material in is at sufficiently close spacing often render vertical drains unnecessary or greatly reduce their real effectiveness. So, suppose here issue is this one, suppose if you have very high permeability materials and there is continuous thick seams of high permeability materials, thick seams means kind of a layers basically a thick, th uh, a thick layer which is highly permeable and then in that case water may go out from that permeable layers in that case you do not require to provide the vertical drains. In order to accurately access the efficiency of a drain system it is necessary that an adequate geotechnical investigation has to be planned we should include continuous core sampling of the strata in situ permeability measurements at low hydraulic heads and laboratory consolidation test on large diameter specimens. So, this is for calculating the efficiency. Uh, some of the uh, like figures and the material materials has been uh, taken from the sir, this book referred by which is from uh, the book by Raj Prashatama uh, titled ground improvement techniques published by Lakshmi publications. So, uh, uh, it is some of the material is from this not all particularly it is related to vertical uh, sand drains, but PVDs are uh, not from this reference. Thank you very much for your kind attention.